I'm Captain Intrigue. Let's take a closer look at my Mark III superhero armor as I tell you the story and hardships of its creation and how the war in Ukraine allowed me to finally finish it. I am Captain Intrigue. After completing my Mark I and Mark II superhero armors, I was inspired to try something completely different for my new suit. My concept for the Mark III armor was to create a very low profile, sleek, armored suit that was half armor and half fabric to protect me from blunt trauma. I wanted more of a stunt suit than a battle armor. I wanted a suit inspired by Batman, Captain America, and Ant-Man. I wanted something that was very easy to put on and take off, so I designed it like an armored motorcycle jacket. I would use Velcro and a unique system of seams to open it up and close it. I also wanted it to be perfectly form-fitted to my body shape, so I flew to Minneapolis and had my first 3D body scan. I took the 3D model from the body scan and sliced it into many smaller blocks and then 3D printed and assembled the blocks into a life-size mannequin of my exact form from the waist up. It literally took me all summer to print these parts and glue them together, but when I was done, I had a perfect mannequin form of my body to design my suit on. I used this mannequin form to custom design my own sewing patterns so it would perfectly fit the contours of my body. I covered the mannequin in masking tape and then drew the lines where I wanted the seams to be. I carefully cut along the masking tape seam lines with an X-Acto knife. The masking tape was carefully pulled up and stuck onto poster board and cut out to form fabric pattern templates. The suit is comprised of three layers, a strong base layer to hold it together followed by a layer of quarter inch EVA foam padding and a final layer of stretch fabric to match around the contours of the foam padding. The next step was to cut all the fabric parts from the patterns, pin them together, and sew them. Sewing was very difficult due to the thickness of the EVA foam and the stretch fabric, and so some areas had to be sewn by hand. After many weeks of sewing, I tried it on and it fit like a glove. I ended up with a form-fitting jacket with padding in all the right places. The padding provided great trauma protection and it matched the contours of my body perfectly and the mobility was amazing. But now came the hard part, the armor. I wanted to create a honeycomb style 3D printed armor made up of many small hexagons to both reduce the armor weight and give it a unique look. The armor parts would be stitched onto the suit similar to the way hockey pads are constructed. I tried designing and 3D printing armor parts to fit the suit but I ran into a lot of problems trying to match the compound curves of my body. I'm good at 3D modeling and SketchUp but when it comes to complex curves SketchUp just isn't capable of doing this effectively. I didn't have any extra time to learn new software so I eventually realized I needed to rethink how I would design and form these armor panels. So I tried something new. I designed and 3D printed the armor parts as flat panels and I used a heat gun to form them to the contours of my body. After several failed attempts I finally got the sizing just right and I successfully formed all the armor pieces. Then I realized I had made a huge mistake. I didn't like the color of the finished armor parts. They were all black and when I placed them on the suit they were practically invisible so I decided to try painting the edges silver to give it some contrast. This looked great so I tried painting the honeycomb areas silver too and those also looked great. So I decided to just paint all the panels with silver highlights. I literally sat in front of a magnifying glass for over a month hand painting every single piece of armor by hand with a tiny paintbrush. In hindsight, if I had known I would be using this color scheme, I could have easily just 3D printed the black and silver layers so I wouldn't have needed to hand paint anything. Oh well. I designed the armor parts so they fit directly over the EVA foam padding. This provides a solid, rigid surface with soft padding directly behind it for maximum trauma protection. Next, I began sewing all these armor panels onto the suit jacket by hand. I had to use needle nose pliers because the fabric was so thick. It took forever, but I found it to be relaxing and meditative work. Every time I finished stitching another panel onto the suit, I'd try it on again to make sure it still fit properly. I finally had all the panels stitched onto the jacket. It looked like this was actually going to work but I spoke too soon. My life suddenly took a few major twists and turns and I ended up relocating to Arizona for a year and the project ended up in a box collecting dust, but it gets worse. Before starting this suit, I had lost a lot of weight on a keto diet so I could fit into my Mark II armor and I designed the Mark III armor around my slimmer body shape from the 3D scan. During that year in Arizona, I ended up gaining some of that weight back and now when I tried the suit on again, I was shocked. It was so small that 
that I couldn't even put it on. See, my body had finally become used to my keto diet and my weight had stabilized at a normal healthy level for my size, but now the armor was way too small for me to even wear it. I had spent all that time building it for nothing. I considered at that point just throwing it in the trash and starting over from scratch, but I thought uh, maybe I would try one simple modification first in the hopes that I might be able to salvage it. I ripped the seams along the sides and inserted strips of blue vinyl into the design. This gave a much more interesting style and color scheme and also added a few inches of girth to the suit. I tried the suit on and to my surprise it fit perfectly and looked so much better than before. Things were starting to look great. Next I added magnetic mounts on the back of the armor so I could utilize a modular weapons backpack design. I began building multiple weapons and a backpack power unit for this armor. These magnets carry power from the backpack to the neck. From there it's routed to the main power switch on my left arm and then back to the right gauntlet. Power is also routed to my chest insignia where it's clipped into place magnetically once the armor is put on. I'll be adding illumination to the insignia soon. I was just about to restart making YouTube videos and then life struck again. It was discovered that I had a half inch diameter kidney stone stuck in my kidney and I needed an emergency surgery to have it removed. I was out of commission for over a year. My recovery was slow and painful. And just as I was almost back on my feet, COVID hit. It was starting to feel like I would never catch a break with this Mark III armor. It was a dark time for me and I thought about scrapping the suit completely and doing something else with my life. During this whole time, I had been filming occasionally with the hopes of restarting on YouTube, but life just kept knocking me down, and every time I got up, I was drop kicked in the head again. But things were about to get even worse. I had decided to try shifting gears and start building a few more suits, the Mark IV and the Mark V, and I had them both nearly finished when the biggest disaster of my life struck. My dog, Odin, who was my best loyal friend and companion, who was with me for over 12 years, died suddenly. I was emotionally lost and devastated and defeated. Words can't describe the pain I felt and still feel from losing him. It seemed like the entire world was working against the idea of me completing another suit of armor. It was the lowest and most painful point of my entire life. So I did what any sane person would do in that situation. I flew to Ukraine to explore the country in the middle of a war zone. Ironically, I was so heartbroken from the loss of Odin that I had zero fear of dying or being injured. I was a fearless and broken man. While I was sitting alone in my cold, dark Airbnb, be without electricity in the city of Lviv, Ukraine, as missiles rained down on the city and as air raid sirens blazed around me. I went on YouTube for the first time in over a year and began reading messages and comments from my videos. At the lowest point of my life, those messages touched my heart in a way that words cannot express. I read those messages of encouragement from all of you at a time when I needed it the most. From my unique perspective in Ukraine, witnessing the suffering and destruction around me firsthand, I realized that I'd been gifted with an opportunity and a great responsibility to help others. In that moment, I told myself I would return home and finish my next suit and restart my YouTube channel and try to make a difference in the world. I would use my terrible pain to fuel my determination and persevere. And so I returned to Michigan and began working 12 hours a day to finish the Mark III armor, since it was already nearly complete. And finally, after many years of struggle, hardship, loss, and pain, it was finally finished. The road to success is often paved with danger, obstacles, and incredible hardship. But it's important to never give up on your dreams, even when you're faced with insurmountable challenges, pain, and loss. In the next few videos, I'll be adding the weapons backpack with the voice changer and flamethrower and a new special surprise, so stay tuned. And check out this related video where I show how I made my Batman-style utility belt.